kratom. It's become a very popular compound in the social web. Some people report positive benefits from taking it daily. What if I told you there was an extreme danger in being chemically castrated as a male using kratom and that you should cease the usage of it immediately? Strap in, friends, because we're about to get into it. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Ryan, and this is the Thunder Channel. On nootropics, on testosterone, on functioning awesomely, I am your host, Ryan Michael Battle. Subscribe to the channel if you're into biohacking, nootropics, feeling and performing awesomely, testosterone, and everything in between. Our broadcasts are supported by nootropic products. I'll explain them later. But we have two nootropic stacks. Number one, the Cortex stack. Number two, the Torque stack. Torque is still buy one, get one free. The coupon code on that is Torque Bogo. You can do that in the description below at livecortex.com. Lastly, if you need to hire me for biohacking consulting, you can do that in under a minute at livecortex.com. Okay, friends, I'm coming to you today with a dire warning about the opioid receptor agonist Kratom. Now, first, I want to start off by saying, like, I am fully aware and totally acknowledge that it's sort of cringe to make, uh, I don't know, blanket statements about physiology or health reporting or whatever. I understand that, like, one compound of what the literature says it may be able to do may not affect uh, everybody in that same way. But for everyone else, I have a dire warning, and that is right off the bat. Kratom can mildly or markedly raise your serum prolactin levels, which in this study that I'm about to show you has some pretty negative consequences. And those primary consequences of that is hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. What that is, is low levels of testosterone, but which is not induced by the typical cause of low testosterone, which is your LH and your FSH, your gonadotropins being low. You can have low testosterone with adequate levels of gonadotropins, which is really fucking eerie. That indicates that your testosterone is being negatively affected, not by luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, which it usually is, but by some other sinister factor, indicating a very other direct inhibitory uh, process on testosterone, which is not good. All right, let's go to the literature on this, and then we'll get to some anecdotals in an actual case study, like a client study. A uh, paper called Kratom, an emerging drug of abuse raises prolactin and causes secondary hypogonadism. Case report. Case report says a 42-year-old man presented with poor energy and low libido had mildly elevated serum prolactin with hypogonadotropic hypogonadism as evidenced by low serum testosterone with luteinizing and follicle-stimulating hormones in the normal range. At his initial visit, he reported no use of recreation therapeutic drugs. Two months later, when we seen him in a follow-up, both the testosterone and prolactin levels had returned to normal, at which time he reported frequent use of kratom before the visit, which he had discontinued a few days after the first visit. So basically what happened is this guy came to his doc and said, I've got low libido, poor energy, probably had erectile dysfunction and was wondering why. The reason or one of the reasons was he had low serum testosterone. So his testosterone basically had tanked. But, you know, the hormones that are basically responsible for you know communicating with the testicles to make you intratesticularly produce testosterone were an adequate level. So like, what the hell was the issue? Guy decided remove the kratom for two months, come back, test everything again. And then everything basically came back to normal, which means he was lucky. And I'm going to get to a case where a person and wasn't so lucky. And this is part of the dire warning. Now I wanna explain, Kratom mechanistically is an opioid receptor agonist. It's a selective and a full agonist, meaning it, it, it has full binding affinity, which is like an important thing to note. Full agonist activity of the U subtype opioid receptor. Opioids themselves, and especially binding to those receptors, are well known to raise serum prolactin levels. Prolactin, as some of you know, or some of you may not know, is a, is a hormone that gets secreted from your pituitary gland. If it gets at too high levels, man, I, I've seen a lot of really terrible things, from complete sexual muting on, on the male scale, to depression, which is usually has to do with the fact that there isn't enough dopamine to stop the prolactin from secreting, to hosts of other problems. I want to point you to a study called the effect of the synergy between opiates and prolactin on the growth of chickens, which tells us it's generally admitted that opioids can stimulate the release of both prolactin via dopamine receptor blockade. Now, this isn't to say that this is going to happen for everyone, but this should stand as a dire warning for people that are looking at Kratom for your pain issue or your otherwise issue to try to seek an alternative route. But back to dopamine, the, the number one element in your physiology, which uh, exerts control over excessive prolactin release 
is dopamine. And cut and dry, kratom blocks dopaminergic receptor sites. This is not good, okay? In no way, shape, or form, you know, unless you're prescribed an antipsychotic, do, do you want to be blocking dopamine receptors. One of the main jobs of dopamine, as I said, is to keep prolactin levels in check. In fact, in the medical literature, dopamine instead of a neurotransmitter is actually referred to as the prolactin inhibiting factor. That out of the way, let's go back to this terrible outcome of having hypogonadism, which is not triggered how it usually is by low LH and FSH, but rather high levels of prolactin. Under no circumstances as a man, none, there are no circumstances in which this makes sense. Do you want to have elevated levels of prolactin? Prolactin, as demonstrated in some of the papers that I just discussed earlier, have direct inhibition properties on male serum androgens and seem to be stopping production at the testicular level. Does that mean, again, bringing you back to this warning, Kratom has the ability to literally shut down your production of testosterone intratesticularly. This is not good, but get this. Prolactin not only has the ability to, th through some direct mechanism and sort of an unknown direct mechanism, inhibit testosterone production at the testicular level, but if you look in the literature, there is a mechanism that is independent of testosterone that also causes men to have low libido and erectile dysfunction. That means you could be on HRT or TRT as an example and have your testosterone levels at fucking a thousand nanograms per deciliter. And still, because you have high prolactin, you're not gonna feel your sex drive. You're probably gonna have ED. Loss in genital sensation, which is horrible. And you will not function adequately as a man or a woman for that matter in terms of sexual function. So you, you, one couldn't even band-aid this, say they wanted to continue taking Kratom with TRT or HRT. It's just not feasible. It isn't going to work. Because as I also discovered in my research when I was working with a client that I'm about to get to in a second, there is a mechanism independent of all this that affects penis tissue and inhibits not only libido, but erection function. And that mechanism is prolactin driven. But why would I cast? I mean, if that wasn't enough, right? You may still be asking the question, why would I cast such a dire warning for, you know, everyone? It's like I'm cautioning everyone on the planet to not use Kratom. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm just giving you a warning about what the literature says, but also I wanna give you a, a pretty stark example of a pretty terrible story of a client of mine. All right, so meet Johnny. Johnny is a 33 year old man, came to me expressing low libido, poor energy, erectile dysfunction and a lack of motivation. He wanted to treat the issue with nootropics because that's kind of one of the predominant things that I do, although I, I dip into all these other areas of testosterone and other things related to biohacking. And, you know, in these consulting programs, consulting calls, th there's always a fact finding period, right? Therein usually lies the reason for people's ales. So I've got to get to the bottom of it. So in peering it a little bit further, this guy was actually on HRT hormone replacement therapy, and he was doing TRT. So his total testosterone was sitting at 800 nanograms per deciliter. His free test was in the middle of the reference range. Estradiol really didn't seem to be problematic, but he hadn't tested prolactin up to that point. And my first intuition, uh, because I've worked with men in the PSSD community, which, which are men that have basically had their sexual function muted and silenced. I mean, complete loss of genital sensation, complete uh, erectile dysfunction, non-existent libido, no brain, organ, visceral connection whatsoever. So my first intuition, like knowing this and having this experience is, well, what is causing a blockade in your sexual function? Because when the folks in the PSSD community, they can have adequate levels of test, but there's something else, a biomarker or otherwise that is still silencing sexual function. So I had the guy run a series of labs. I was maybe suspecting prolactin. I was expecting like, I don't know, other fringe compounds like that one usually doesn't look at, like estrone or estriol, other estrogens, not just estradiol. And the prolactin, what do you know, came back to 67 nanograms per milliliter, which in the reference range of like five nanograms per milliliter to like 20 nanograms per milliliter is definitely way too high. Upon further inspection, because I didn't know that he was using Kratom, this guy was using Kratom. So upon further inspection of this dude's regimen, Johnny, call him, he expressed that from a shoulder injury and because of a shoulder injury and pretty constant pain in that shoulder, he was taking Kratom. Like, Eureka, we found it. Like in my eyes, that was it. We found the root of his low sexual function, ED, low libido, and lack of motivation. Now, here's what's interesting. I want you to go back to the study that I uh, expressed in the beginning of this uh, video, which said that the guy that was taking Kratom when he had uh, low levels of testosterone and no libido and e ED and no sexual function, that he had 
ceased usage of kratom and then came back to get everything tested like two months later and everything had returned to normal. Study cites uh, two months later when we seen him in a follow-up, both testosterone and prolactin levels had returned to normal. At that visit, he reported frequent use of kratom, which he had discontinued a few days after the first visit. Now, does that mean that serum prolactin is going to go down and testosterone levels are going to go back to normal for everybody? No. The answer is no. And therein lies part of my dire warning. Because with my client, Johnny, before going on heavy things to target the reduction of prolactin, like uh, cabergoline or something, that'd be like the first choice of action, which is a, a dopamine receptor agonist, a pretty potent dopamine receptor agonist, which for almost every everyone is going to lower prolactin. I wanted to give it some time. Like, you know, having taken this study into consideration, like you don't want to jump right into taking hardcore dopamine agonists if you don't have to. So we waited and we waited. And we waited. Client didn't use Kratom anymore, anymore, per my instruction. And he dealt with his pain issues otherwise. And three months later, when we ran the labs again to look at prolactin and see if it had dropped. And by the way, his anecdotals were, no, there's no improvement in sexual function, no improvement in the ED. I still have low libido. I'm still not motivated. We looked at the serum prolactin levels and instead of being 67 nanograms per milliliter, it had dropped a whopping seven nanograms per milliliter to 60 nanograms per milliliter. This is a slow drop all things considered, if you compare it to cabergoline, bromocryptine, other prolactin lowering drugs, this is an extremely slow drop of prolactin. At this rate, I mean, this guy would have had no sex drive, crappy erections, low motivation, no libido for like six months to a year. Actually had to use cabergoline, which he got a script for through a doctor. And within 45 days of starting cabergoline, his prolactin levels were back down in the normal range. I think one of the readings around that time was like 10 nanograms per milliliter. And he reported not only a full recovery of sexual function, but described feeling like a teenager again, in terms of like libido and raging erections and random random erections and all this, all this TMI stuff. He had complained, by the way, so this is back to the dire warning uh, prior to all this, that like he didn't respond to sexual stimuli at all. Like, you know, if you're, I don't know, God forbid, you're watching porn or if you're around a female or whatever you're interested in like you know your junk responds to the stimuli it's an instant connection and you get a response he had zero response whatsoever and and this is what really gets scary about having super high levels of prolactin or even markedly high levels of prolactin he had lost all sensation in his junk right now th that happens to some of the pssd folks that i've worked with in the past and that is fucking scary and i know that you know high prolactin isn't the cause of pssd necessarily it can be it can be. I've seen that too. It's a lot of different things. But, you know, back to this case, again, lowering prolactin, getting it back within the normal range, returned all sexual function back to normal and then some. Now, here's where I need to intensify the warning as if that wasn't dire enough. And I'm like, you know, giving you folks that take Kratom or thinking about Kratom, like the absolute doldrums here. You have to think about this. What if this guy didn't have a competent medical consultant or biohacker that's like really seriously into this stuff, like by his side? What if he didn't know like where to look on why his libido was crappy? You know, his doc may have given him like an aromatase inhibitor, maybe thinking, oh, we just need to lower your serum estradiol and that usually inhibits sexual function. Maybe that'll make things come back to normal. Then he would have been taken, you know, know, AIs, and if you crash your estrogen with aromatase inhibitors, that can cause host of side effects and can b basically make you have a real terrible time. And this could have went on for a year or two years or more. I mean, like I have seen people and I've read about people that have medical conditions that because they haven't gotten to the bottom of it, they'll have symptoms for five fucking years. And in this case, you know, a, a case of what is full on kind of chemical castration, that is not good. Now, relative to my warning, I want to ask you, is is pain that you may be having, like in your shoulder, or your back or whatever, or like some, some article that you read, which is probably like uber biased and written by somebody who doesn't understand the physiology of what they're fussing with here, you know, and suggestions to take Kratom, is that worth potentially losing all of your sexual function? And by the way, potentially risking cardiovascular issues because by the way, there are prolactin receptors in arterial plaque. I think that the answer is no. One can always find an alternative to like pain issues if if they're taking Kratom. Now I know some people are taking Kratom, you know, for, for the opioid side, they may have opioid receptor issues, et cetera. And to that I say, good luck. I know you're in a rough situation. I, I fully understand, but I still would caution you against the use of Kratom. And by the way, going on Kratom because like you read somewhere, like somebody's uh, anecdotal about it and like that it made them feel good or gave them like energy or something like is a haphazard way to make a decision, a health decision to go on something that could potentially have some really negative 
effects. So my final warning to you, again, acknowledging and considering that this may not happen to everyone and that no statement in physiology or biohacking or health reporting or whatever is should be a blanket statement and applies to everyone. But the research is very clear and the mechanisms are super clear on opioid receptor agonism and that's effect on serum prolactin levels. My warning for you is if you don't want to run the risk of losing your sexual function, which may be incredibly hard to get back for some people. People and may last years stay away from Kratom, okay? There are probably alternatives that you can execute. There's always an alternative and you've got to maybe get a little more creative, do a little more research, try to find something else. In my years of using nootropics and talking about all things biohacking, all the various chemicals that we have available to us, plenty of people have come to me and said, what do you think of Kratom? I take Kratom. This thing says Kratom is good. And I've I've, I've honestly never had a good feeling about it. Like I know what it does. I know mechanistically in terms of the opioid receptors, what it's doing. And there's just really nothing good about it. You can induce positive mood, motivation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you're looking to do with other compounds. And by the way, there really shouldn't be much of a motivation increase while using Kratom. If you're experiencing that, it's because of the opioid receptor agonism. But at the same time, you are literally blocking dopamine receptors. All right, so I hope I've given you some literature-based and some anecdotal-based uh, food for thought you know, to avoid this compound. I know it's become popular. It's come on the scene 10 years ago or whatever. And some people use it and report all this positive stuff. But like, I mean, at the 5,000 foot level, working with real people and my client, Johnny, is not the only person that's come to me with real serious issues as a result of using Kratom. Many other people have, okay? Be smart, consider everything I just said. And my overall assessment is stay away from it. Pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for watching. On a lighter note, <laughs> Epic Nootropic products support this broadcast and you can get them at livecortex.com. The first of them is the Cortex stack. I mean, this is motivation, mental energy, verbal fluency. It's actually a potent kind of upregulator of the dopaminergic system, right? The complete opposite. Like you're gonna want dopamine to function and fire really well. Uh, Cortex, when you take it, it's like 25 minutes later, you feel energy, stimulation, motivation. You're more verbally fluent. Your brain works better and you just wanna tackle work. You can get Cortex at livecortex.com. Second, Secondarily, uh, the most purchased stack on the internet, very popular nootropic stack since we launched it back in July, is the Torque nootropic stack. This thing was built for six to eight hours of solid energy. And it's a clean stimulant, man. It's like, it, it, imagine having an Adderall alternative, but that doesn't cause side effects that you can always rely on and take pretty consistently. That's Torque. Buy it down below it's in the description uh, of this video or at livecortex.com. And lastly, this is the last two days. So this is going to end on Wednesday of buy one, get one free on Torque. So we're still running BOGO. Buy one, get one free coupon code is Torque BOGO. You enter that at checkout. If you buy one bottle, you will literally get another bottle for free and you will not pay for that second bottle. That ends Wednesday. Uh, it looks like the 29th of February. So get on that as soon as possible. Again, coupon code Torque BOGO. If you need to hire me for anything related to biohack, whether it's to testosterone, maybe you have a prolactin issue, nootropics, nootropic formulation, energy formulation. You're not functioning and firing the way that you did five years ago and you'd like to get that zest back. Everything else in between, you can do that in under a minute at livecortex.com. Otherwise, pleasure being with you guys. If you liked any bit of this video, please consider subscribing and I will talk to you on the next one.